morning students i am k vijayawardhan assistant professor department of electronics and communication engineering i hope you are doing well in this pandemic covid 2019 for you i am going to discuss the subject which is computer architecture and organization so why we have to learn this subject i hope everyone have a computer systems nowadays as a student no doubt you are using either laptop or a desktop what this subject deals this subject deals about what are the different components those are present in the computer system their functions and everything we are going to discuss in a system in this particular subject fine next we will see what are the objectives what are the objectives of this particular course so see here friends so there are three objectives the first objective is the architecture of modern computer system with its various processing units we understand the architecture of modern computer system with its various processing units see here so modern computer with its various processing units that means we know that every computer have different elements like a central processing unit memory elements and then i o devices we'll go and uh, see what are the functions those are performed in our computer system later classes the second thing is we can also understand the performance measurement of a computer system so here what are performance is the performance means the speed of operation of the system so every time we are expecting that how fast our system is for example we are assigned certain task to our system how fast our system can able to uh, finish that particular task so that indicates a performance so for every system we can calculate a performance of computer with the help of performance equation so the second thing what we understand from this subject is that is performance measurement of the computer system and coming to the third objective of this particular course is the memory management of the system it is a place of vital role because in our system we have a different memory elements we are using from our register to uh, secondary memories so how these uh, memory elements are organized so that is also we can understand at the end of this particular course these are three are the objectives of this particular course fine coming to the next one that is comes what we are getting our learning of this particular a subject so there are six outcomes for this course so those are like this the student and understand the architecture of modern computer so that already we discussed in objectives so again here it is outcome of first outcome of this particular course is the student can understand the architecture of a modern computer the second outcome is the student can able to calculate the performance of computer system with the help of performance equation that is the second one and coming to the third one is the student can understand different instruction types what here instruction is an instruction is a command which gives a directions to the system to perform a particular task so we learn about what are the different types of instructions that is also we can understand in this and coming to the fourth one we can also calculate the effective address of an operands by an addressing mode so here important thing is each and every instruction belongs to certain addressing mode so here each and every instruction have an operation code as well as operand so here what an operation code indicates an operation code indicates what is the type of operation you are going to perform by using that instruction and the operands that indicates about a data so here we can calculate effective address of an operand by different addressing modes so you remember friends every instruction definitely it will belongs to certain addressing mode 
the name itself indicates addressing mode the way in which the data was represented in the instruction operand field that indicates an addressing mode in later classes we can go and discuss much more about this addressing modes so the fourth outcome of this particular a uh, course is how we can calculate effective orders of uh, operands by different addressing modes and coming to the next how a computer can store the positive as well as negative numbers because always our computer can do a different arithmetic and logical operations so if i want to do either arithmetic or logical operations the first important thing is how we are going to represent those numbers so here we can also understand how a computer system store positive and negative numbers internally and coming to the last outcome is how our system can able to perform arithmetic as well as logical operations on your assigned numbers those are nothing but positive and negative numbers these are the six different outcomes of this particular course i hope you understand objectives as well as outcomes of our course computer architecture and organization fine later we can go and see the syllabus that is another important thing so here i just represent only the main headings of our units in our syllabus there are total 6 units we know that our computer system consists of different major blocks like cpu like our system consists number 1 is cpu number 2 is memory number 3 is i o we know this a system has these are three blocks coming to our syllabus it is easy to understand friends out of these six units three units completely discussing about this central processing unit because we know that for a system a cpu is act as heart we know that so that's why in our entire six units three units discussing about central processing units those are unit 2 unit 3 and then unit 6 these are three units discussed about the central processing unit cpu fine coming to the memory so about the memory system one unit is dedicated in our syllabus that was unit 5 this unit 5 completely deals memory systems and unit 4 deals about io devices in addition to this you have one more unit that is unit 1 in this unit 1 we are going to learn about the basics of our computer system so this is a simply about our syllabus i hope you understand out of six units three units completely discussing about cpu those are three units are unit 2 unit 3 and then unit 6 and coming to the memory we have one unit in our syllabus that was unit 5 and for io devices we have one more unit in our syllabus that is unit 4 and one unit that is unit 1 gives the basics regarding to our subject our computer system fine these are the syllabus now coming to what are the textbooks what are the textbooks that we are going to refer from this subject there are two textbooks one is a computer organization by karl hamacher vranitz and then zaki fifth edition megrahil publication so here our one of the textbook for this particular course is computer organization by karl hamacher you remember this friends because the most of syllabus we are getting from this textbook and the second textbook we are going to refer for this course is computer architecture and organization by john p hayes this is another a textbook that is helpful for us to learn this particular course in addition to this if i want to refer some of the standard books so these are the reference books out of here i mentioned total four reference books for our course but out of these are four the first book is very very important book to learn this entire course that is a computer organization and architecture by william stanis this is a one of 
wonderful book for this entire course. If you have any minute doubt regarding to this subject, this is the best book to go and clarify our doubts. I repeat you friends, in our reference books, the first book that is the computer organization and architecture is very very important book to learn the concepts what we have in this particular course. Fine. The second text reference book is Structured Computer Organization by Andrews S. Tenenbaum. This is another reference book. You can go and refer this one also for our course for different concepts. Fine. Next, coming to the next one that is, this is the third one the fundamentals of computer organization and uh, design by Sivaram Dandanayani Springer International Edition. This is the third reference. And coming to a fourth reference textbook is Computer Organization and Design, the Hardware and Software Interface by David A. Patterson. So these are the uh, four uh, reference books for our course Computer Architecture and Organization. But you remember friends, out of all these things, you gone through only two textbooks. The first one is Computer Organization by, the first book is Computer Organization by, Organization by Carl Hamacher. Everyone take this book from our library. So this is the first one. The second one, you took the reference book that is Computer Organization and Architecture by William Stanks. So, these are two textbooks are important for our course. I hope you understand what are the textbooks and reference books needed for this course. Fine. Next, what a computer is? The next thing is what our computer is. In a title itself, computer architecture and organization. Fine. So, what a computer is? You have to uh, know this. Please uh, see here, friends. So, computer is a fast electronic calculating machine which accepts digital information as an input. It processes it with the help of a list of instructions which are stored internally and produces the results to the user. I repeat, what a computer is? It is a fast electronic calculating machine. The meaning of this one is our computer system can do the calculations at faster rate. It is an electronic device because it can be de designed with the help of electronic elements or electronic devices. So it is a fast electronic calculating machine which can accept digital information. Digital information means uh, the binary information. The information which is in the form of ones and zeros because our system can be designed with the help of uh, switching elements, nothing but our transistors. We know that. Right? So, here our system can accept digitized information or binary information as an input. It can process it with the help of list of instructions which are stored internally and produces the results to the user or it produces results to the output. This is what our computer system is. In the next, I would like to give a clear cut difference between what a computer architecture and what computer organization. Because so many people think that these are two are same. But you remember friends, these are not two are same. There is a lot of difference between a computer architecture and computer organization. Now we try to find what the differences between this uh, computer architecture and then organization. Fine. We can go and see first about what a computer architecture is. What a computer architecture is. The computer architecture refers to the parameters of computer system which are visible to the programmer. I repeat. So what a computer architecture is. The computer architecture refers to the parameters of computer system which are visible to 
the programmer not for the user it is somewhat tough to us to identify the meaning of this that's why i can go for the second definition for this computer architecture the computer architecture refers to the study of computer from the designer point of view who make our computer from his point of view the study of computer is nothing but the computer architecture now i hope you understand something what's the meaning of a computer architecture is now you go for the first one that is what a computer architecture the computer architecture refers to the parameters of computer system which are visible to the programmer that is number one and i can say in another way that is a computer architecture refers to the study of computer from the designer point of view fine next we can see something different what is the analogy for this the analogy for this computer architecture is an architecture task during the planning of a building is a overall that is overall layout of our building you can give that plan as well as you can give four plan you can also mention the sizes of the rooms where we have a door or where we have a window all this type of plan that can be provided by an architect right so in a similar way the computer architecture what it studies it is studies about how we are going to build a computer in order to build a computer what are the parameters that are needed what are the sizes all these things sir, they can discuss in this computer architecture to understand that i can use certain examples for this uh, computer architecture in that the first example is the instruction set it is very very important what are the different operations our system can go and perform what are the operations that are performed by your computer system that is purely depends on what are the instructions that computer must have in its instruction set so this is the first uh, architectural attribute and coming to the system Second example that is the number of bits that are needed to use to represent a different data types. In our computer system we are using different data types. Sometimes we are using unsigned numbers, sometimes we are using signed numbers. What are their sizes? That means your number can be representing with 8 bits or it can be representing with 16 bits or it's maybe 32 bit. So here the second architectural attribute is the number of bits are used to represent a different data types. This is the third one, second one. And coming to the third example is, what are the different techniques of memory addressing? How we are going to address our memory? All these things we consider as the examples for architecture of a computer. I hope you understand what a computer architecture is. Just I recall once. What a computer architecture? The computer architecture refers to the parameters which are visible to the programmer. That's the first definition. The second definition of a computer architecture is the computer architecture refers to the study of computer from a designer point of view. And third thing is analogy for this. That is an architect task during a planning of a building is you can give the plan for overall layout, floor plan, the sizes of the rooms, where we have a doors and where we have windows all this planning that can be provided by an architect the same job that will be done by our computer architecture you remember this then examples for this the attributes for this uh, computer architecture is one is instruction set the second one is the number of bits are used to represent a different data types and then what is the different techniques which we are using to address a memory fine this is about our computer architecture now we will see for computer organization our second one is the computer organization see friends computer organization refers to the operational units and their interconnection fine so what a computer organization is it refers to operational units and their interconnections then i will give you a clarity about what a system consists you can specify what a cpu memory and i o device these are needed for making of a system that information can be given by an architect in organization what we are trying to do is 
How we are going to interconnect those uh, operational units? So that's why computer organization equals to the operational units and their interconnections. So that is suppose the second one is the computer organization refers to the study of computer from user point of view that is an important phrase. What a computer organization? The computer organization refers to the study of computer from user point of view that is important. In previous case what we can say about computer architecture is the study of computer from a designer point of view but now the computer organization refers to the study of computer from user point of view that's important next we can go and see analogy analogy for this computer organization is a civil engineer stands during building construction is you can go and select how much cement is needed what type of cement that is needed for building of uh, construction and second one is what type of bricks what are their sizes how much iron all these things are taken care of uh, a civil engineer so and logic for computer organization is a civil engineer's task during building construction is you can select the amount of cement as well as the type of cement that indicates the manufacturer and the sizes of bricks and how many bricks are needed for construction of our building as well as how much iron is needed how much wood is needed all these things are taken care of as civil engineer next similarly coming to the examples what are the examples for this organization the first one is the control signals these are important to us these signals generally generated by central processing unit. That central processing unit, that is our CPU, this is CPU, send the control signals to memory as well as an IO devices to do a certain task. It is like this. So, organizational examples, organizational attributes example is one is the control signals, that is this. And second one is interface between a computer and its peripherals. We know that peripherals are nothing but an I.O. devices. These are some of I.O. devices. These we can also call as external devices like this. External devices. These external devices we can call as how these peripherals are connected to your system. This is your system is right that is the second one, how interface uh, the computer and its peripherals. And coming to the next one is, what is the memory technology that was used? That means you are using memories, semiconductor memory, it may be optical memory, or it may be optical memory, magnetic memory, what are the different memory technologies that we are using in our system? All these things we consider as the examples for organizational attributes i hope now you understand what a, a computer architecture and what a computer organization and you understand the difference between these are two right now i would like to discuss something regarding to our computers that is uh, the history of computer development that means historical prospect of our computers fine so study journey of building automatic computing machines have driven the development of computers and the initial days we make our computing machines with the help of different uh, mechanical devices but nowadays we are making our computing machines with, help, with the help of electronic devices there are so many changes that we are observing in design of computers. So that's why here my statement is study journey of uh, study journey of building of automatic computing machines, automatic computing machines driven the development of computers. So I can give some idea regarding to the history of the computers. My first point is like this: at the initial days. 
in the initial days making of computing machines that is a purely done with the help of mechanical devices like pulleys, levers and the gates. At the initial days of computing machines, we took the help of mechanical devices in their design. We know that the computing machine is it can do certain tasks. It can do certain automatic operation on input numbers. We make that computing machines in the initial days with the help of uh, mechanical devices like pulleys, levers and then gates. That is the initial days. Once we make, uh, once we make vacuum tubes, once the vacuum tubes are comes onto the picture, the designing of computers are somewhat changes. Vacuum tubes are electronic devices. Once you are trying to utilize electronic devices in the designing of computers or computing machines, the speed of operation of the machine is increases as well as their size may be reduces. These two advantages we are getting by utilization of these uh, vacuum tubes. Now see here friends, by using these vacuum tubes we make uh, a first computer in the world which is ENIAC, the first electronic Calculating machine we designed with the help of vacuum tubes in a computer system is ENIAC. So this is the first one. So at the initial days we make computing machines with the help of mechanical devices. Later stages we make computing machines with the help of vacuum tubes. And thereafter a drastic change that comes on to computer industry that was happened once we design the transistors once we make a semiconductor transistor there is a drastic change we are observing in making of computer system the computer system sizes is drastically reduces once we are going to use a transistor technology that is a major stepping stone in a designing of computing machines once we make our computers with the help of our transistors the size of transistor starts reducing. So the size of computer starts reducing. The miniaturization of a system starts or it begins once we are using transistors. Utilization in a computer design. Later, we are going to develop our computer system with the help of IC technology. Nowadays, we are using IC technology. In IC technology also, we have a different variants. SSI to MSI, MSI to LSI, LSI to VLS, ULSI to ULSI and now billions of billions of transistors we are integrated on a single chip. Once a number of transistors are integrated on a single silicon chip automatically the size of your computer is reduces. We know that now we can observe our memory chips. The size of memory chip is very very small but it can store a lot of amount of information. We know that. Right. Now I can show you some of the uh, computing machines. So this is the first computing machine which is called as Pascaline. This Pascaline was designed by B. Pascal in 1642. In 1642 the pass line was designed by B. Pascal. This is the computing machine, mechanical calculator. The important thing regarding to this mechanical calculator is, it can do only two operations. One operation is addition, that is this. And the second operation is subtraction on two numbers. This pass line can do either addition or subtraction on two numbers at a time but it can't perform either multiplication or a division straight away but what it does is it want to do a multiplication it will use a repetitive addition repetitive addition similarly in order to do division it will do the help of a repetitive subtraction so this is a one of the a computing machines in the initial days. I repeat, the first uh, computing machine is Pascaline, which was designed by B. Pascal in 1642. It can do only addition and subtraction on two numbers at a time. 
it can't perform multiplication and division it want to do a multiplication it took the help of repetitive addition as well as in order to do a division it took the help of a repetitive subtraction i hope this is uh, the structure of our task right right next coming to the second one so babesh engine the next one is babesh engine so we know that charles babesh is a father of computers we know that he designed one design for a computer which is called babesh engine in the 19th century in the 19th century he make a babesh engine but unfortunately he couldn't build it he couldn't build it but it was built in in the year 2002 that means after 153 years of his a discovery we make a babesh engine the specialty of this babesh engine is it consists of 800 parts and its weight is nearly 5 tons and its length is 11 feet can you imagine guys how big babesh engine is we know that charles babbage is the father of computers he discovered one computing machine but unfortunately he, he didn't build it it was built in 2002 that you remember so this is the next one right this is uh, the babbage engine babbage engine and this is the next any this is electronic numerical integrator and a calculator so we know that this is the computer which we designed with the help of uh, vacuum tubes it is a first automatic electronic uh, calculator which is eniac so it was uh, developed by john ashley and then john presfer eckert at the university of pennsylvania and uh, it's a uh, consists of 18000 vacuum tubes and it weight is uh, nearly 30 tons and it occupies a space of 30 feet into a 50 feet so again you can assume it is how large it is previous devices we designed with the help of mechanical devices but now this is the first electronic car uh, computing machine we designed with the help of vacuum tubes so that is eniac and next one is uh, this is the eniac system so you can understand the size of this it can send so much power so next this is uh, harvard mark 1 this is also built with the help of uh, mechanical devices only so see here friends so with the help of mechanical relays mechanical relays we make this particular mark 1 system at the university of harvard in 1944 with the support of ibm so the problem with us is the weight of this particular computer is 35 tons and we need a it is very very important we need a 500 miles of wire for its construction for its construction we need 500 miles of wire right so you can see this is harvard mark 1 system is and next ibm 360 this is another computer it is very popular mainframe computer especially in 1960s and 1970s it is a mainframe computer and it was introduced many advanced architectural concepts those concepts we use in microprocessors now it is microprocessors we can call as processors or simply these are processors are nothing but a cpu of a system in several decades later we use what are the different architectural concepts we introduced in this mainframe computer those we observing in this microprocessors several decades later right now i'll show you the picture of this this is our ibm 360 this is a mainframe computer our next intel i7 this is intel i7 this is a uh, one of the processor so modern intel i7 is modern a processor chip that comes with dual core quad core as well as hex core variants nowadays if you go and refer a mobile phone or a laptop or a desktop 
what the processor that uh, uh, device consists it is part core processor it is opt core processor or it may be dual core processor like this what this course you remember friends core is a nothing but a processing unit you remember this core is nothing but a processing unit your processor is a dual core that means on your processor we have two processing units your processor is quad core the processor has a four processing units these are four processing units run in parallel once these are processing units run in parallel no doubt the speed of operation of your system is increases right so then the lid is a 64 bit microprocessor i'm already told you processor is nothing but a cpu fine in this processor designing we are using various micro architectures some of them are haswell nehlo as well as sandy bridge these are the different micro architectures we are using in the making of this uh, intel i7 core processor right now see friends its structure is its structure is it is a i7 processor right it has a four cores this is a core one so this is a core one this is a core two this is a core three and this is core four each core is a nothing but one processing element or processing unit these are four processing units run in parallel so the speed of operation of your system is increases i hope you understand different uh, i hope you understand a different uh, historical background different systems in a historical background of our computers right this is your last one so this particular table gives an idea to us the generations of computers here i have mentioned total six generations these generations are uh, depends on what are the technology that we are using making of that and what are the uh, prospective systems so the first generation is that was designed purely with the help of vacuum tubes as well as relays the duration of this one is 1945 to 1954 in those systems we are using machine level as well as assembly language are the two languages which are used for des designing of programs the example systems for that particular one is any of as well as ibm 701 next the second generation systems are designed with the help of transistors second generation systems are designed with the help of transistors its a duration is 1955 to 1964 in a second generation systems we start utilization of high level languages hlls high level languages are generally machine independent languages but previous languages that is a machine language as well as assembly language both are machine dependent languages the example system for second generation is ibm 7090 and coming to the third generation systems their duration is 1965 to 1964 74 these are designed with the help of uh, integrated circuit technology which is ssi and msi ssi means uh, small scale integration small scale integration similarly msi means uh, medium scale integration medium scale integration so ic technology starts uh, in a third generation systems in that systems uh, multi programming concept was introduced the example system for this is uh, ibm 360 as well as uh, 8008 which is intel processor and next one is the fourth generation it is start from 1975 to 1984 in that we are using lsi as well as vlsi technology there we are using multi processor concept example processor 8086 and 8088 and the next to fifth generation is that is from 1985 to 1990 in that we are using vlsi technology as well as multi processor on a chip for this uh, the using concept is uh, parallel computing the example processor is Intel 486. And coming to the last one, guys, the sixth generation, 
it is starts from 1990th onwards now we are in the sixth generation in this generation the systems are designed with the help of ulsi technology ulsi means ultra large scale integration as well as we are also using post cmos technology for making of our systems the example for this here is a pentium processor in this particular table i can give a small idea regarding to the generations of computer systems what are the designing technologies we are using in those generations and what are the example uh, processors or uh, systems in that generations i hope you understand about these concepts in the next class i can go and discuss about one more topic i hope you understand all these things thank you for patiently sir thank you